Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might find yourself on this blue planet we call Earth. Um, I'm back again with another video to discuss triad inversions on the electric or acoustic or baritone guitar, any guitar. As long as it's tuned in fourths, it will follow these rules. Ah, there's nothing like a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm really tired. I overslept um, by at least 30 minutes. So I'm not feeling too great right now. But we're here. And here's another video as promised. But before I get into the topic of today's discussion, I just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who's subscribed to this channel thus far. Um, I'm not in it for the numbers. I'm not in it for the subscribers and i'm not in it for like clout i don't care about clout really but every single subscriber has been meaningful to me because the engagement has been so enriching it's given me motivation to continue um dedicating time to discuss this instrument um when i started six days ago i only had about 60 subscribers and a week later we've broken 100 I've almost doubled, I have doubled, I'm at 127 subscribers as we speak. Um, and again, it's not about the number count, I'm not really in it for that. But it would be cool to make this a legitimate platform that enriches many musicians' lives. So because of that, I would appreciate if you share the videos and get other people to subscribe so that we can reach um, our goals together. Um, I've been wanting to do this YouTube thing for about a year and a half, two years, but I've always been afraid to do it because I always made excuses. I told myself, oh, I need to get good at editing first. I need to get good at writing scripts. I need a, but right now I'm just doing it improvised in the moment. And as the channel grows and the topics become more and more in depth, the presentation will grow. I think I will get some editing done. I will eventually have some graphics on the screen showing exactly what i'm doing maybe different camera angles but for what it is right now thank you so much for joining me at the inception of this journey uh i promise you it will be worth it if you stick around till the end and the end is only when i'm dead so it'll be a really long time hopefully anyway so today we're going back to the Tried inversions. In the first video, we spoke about the string set 3, 2, 1, which is the G string, the B string, and the E string, and the triads that live on those string sets. For instance, there's your second inversion, root position, first inversion, second inversion, and it repeats. Right, my guitar is slightly out of tune, um, but I don't have a tuner on me right now, so I'll just have to go with that. And then in the second video, we spoke about the string set 2, 3, 4, which looks a bit like an A minor chord. And it is an A minor 7 chord if you play the A bass. That's the sound. Uh, but if you don't play the A bass, it's just a C major triad in first inversion. So then it's first inversion, second inversion, root position, first inversion, and it repeats. Right. Today's focus is going to be these two string sets. Um, and again, remember, we only now, for now, we're only dealing with adjacent string sets, which are strings directly next to each other. We're not skipping any string in building the chord. But then you do get triads that are non-adjacent, like, for instance, this F major. Right. We will get into non-adjacent string sets eventually. Uh, but I think it's very important for you to grasp the fundamentals of how a triad functions on this instrument and then build up the concept and taking it in all 12 keys. I did say I'll make a video on the circle of fourths that is coming. I'll shoot that today after I've shot this video. I think I want to get as many videos done today as possible. I'm feeling motivated. <laughs> okay, so let's start with string set 345, which would be the A string, the D string and the G string, right? Pardon me. So over here, it looks kind of like a. Remember in the second video, I said that this chord, the C chord, especially if you put the G in the bass, contains every single inversion uh, possible uh, for a C chord on the guitar. I think that's why C is such a good place to start. So if you look at that, this, it looks like a, an E shape almost, but it starts on the low. E string on the third fret G as the lowest note 
So this is second inversion C major. Okay, it's got the the fifth in the lowest voice, the G. Then this would be root position, right? This would be first inversion. This would be second inversion. Then octave up. So this and this are separated by an octave. Okay. Now, for this string set three, four, five. It looks again like a C major chord, but you lift your finger. You don't need to put your finger there. The reason I'd lift the finger is because as you move through the inversions, your finger, sh uh, the finger positions change. So get used to playing it without resting your finger there. And eventually, once you've gotten all these triads under your fingers, you can put your fingers wherever you want. You can play them like this. You can play it like that. You can play it like that. It's totally up to you. Okay. So the first one would be third fret on the A string. Second fret on the D string and our open G string will give us our C major chord in root position. You can hear it, right? Our first inversion with the E in the bass would be seventh fret. Oh, made a mistake there. Seven, five, five. That's first inversion. So we have root, then we have first. Then we will get second inversion, which should be 10, 10, 9. 10 on the A, 10 on the D, 9 on the G string. Okay, This shape looks an awfully lot similar to, doesn't it? It's an octave up. So that means if this and this are separated by an octave, then it means this and this are the same. And you can hear they sound very similar. The reason why they sound slightly different is because the strings are not the same thickness. So a thick string higher up is the same pitch as a thin string lower down. Again, I'll get into the philosophy of the guitar and the nature of the instrument and how you should start thinking about it if you want to have fun with it. This shouldn't feel like a job. It should feel like an adventure. It should feel like a, a, a map and you're finding treasure. Every day you show up, you find new treasure. Um, so yeah, this is uh, an octave up of this, which if I can just segue, all of these things are the same. For instance, this is this, is this, is this. They, they're the same notes in the same order. It's just where you locate them becomes different. And this becomes stylistic. It becomes a stylistic choice where you choose to play these things. For instance, I don't really enjoy playing chords above the 12th fret. It, it makes me feel a bit strange currently. Maybe as I grow in my journey as a musician, I will get to a point where I enjoy playing chords up there. But for now, that is reserved for lead playing, which to be honest, I'm not that great at either. Mm. So I'm really trying to wake up. We're eight minutes in and we've made some progress. That's great. So the three, four, five string group, this would be root, first inversion, second inversion, and again, we go back to root. Now, an interesting thing to observe about the root position triad is again, this, is this, is this, is this. They sound the same, or similar at least. And you see, once you understand where to find the same grouping of notes all over the guitar, you won't have to rely on position playing to express yourself. You play in a position if you feel like it. You play out of position if you feel like it. it. The point of learning this instrument should be command. You should desire to have a command over this instrument to let it do whatever you want it to do. It's like riding a horse or anything else. <laughs> Uh, it's like an inanimate horse because a horse is actually a living creature. So one more time, root position, first inversion, uh, second inversion, root. The numbers of the frets as follows. Third fret on the A, second fret on the D, open G string, right? That's your root position. Then seven on the A, five on the D, five on the G, that's first inversion. Then 10 on the A, 10 on the D, 9 on the G. That's second inversion. And then it repeats. So this is this. Perfect. Go practice that. 
And along with that, practice this. Remember we said that the rules for inverting a chord is as follows. If you're starting on a second inversion, the, the chord below you will be first inversion and the chord above you will be root position. Now, because this is a six string guitar and there are eight string guitars that exist, there's nine string guitars that exist. I think I want a seven string guitar. I feel like seven is the perfect number of strings for the guitar. Um, and I'll get into that discussion another time. But uh, if I had a seven string guitar, this wouldn't be my lowest C chord. I'd have another one because the B string will have a first fret on the B string would be a C note because there's no B sharp or is there. Hmm. Anyway, so we get our second inversion, which means the next chord should be root position. So second inversion is three, three, two, three on the E, three on the A, two on the D. And this looks awfully similar to, and it sounds similar to because it's just an octave up. Okay. So then that's our second inversion. Root position would be eight, seven, five. Eight on the E, seven on the D, five on the, uh, eight on the E, seven on the A, five on the D. That's our root position. And this looks and sounds a lot like, right? Because the guitar repeats itself, which many people might find redundant, but I find that that's one of the strongest things that the guitar has to offer is the fact that it repeats itself, okay? It's incessant. And also it gives you, as a player, your own personal way of navigating this thing and having your own words to say. Have you ever noticed that you can tell which guitarist is which because there's an abundance of things that make the guitar unique? Just with the electric guitar, there's, or just with the guitar in general, there's multiple ways to find the same notes. We're not even talking cable choices, amp choices, guitar choices, pickup choices, uh, tuning uh, conventions we're not even talking about all that we're just talking about a standard strung standard tuned six string guitar um someone might play this thing like this for instance i'm going to try and make up a little melody but then on this side it'll be because that just feels more comfortable than even though they sound the same I'm butchering this right now, but you get my point. I'm pretty sure you do. So let's go through those two string sets again. Um, let's start with the lowest string set. That will be three, three, two. Then it becomes uh, eight, seven, five. And then it goes to 12, 10, 10. Then this 12, 10, 10 looks a lot like seven, five, five. Sounds the same as well. So second inversion, root position, first inversion, and then second inversion repeat. And remember, if this is our second inversion, we can find that same thing here, we can find that same thing here, we can find that same thing here. So once you've learned all the triads and all the string sets, I recommend you trying to find which ones exist within the same octave. For instance, like I just demonstrated now, this is our second inversion in the same range as this, in the same range as this, in the same range as this. And I had a short video that I uploaded talking about navigating uh, the circle of fourths using uh, triads. Um, sorry, I got distracted. I just got an email that someone just subscribed. This feels so crazy to me. I can't believe that this YouTube thing is actually happening. So thank you once again for being a part of my journey. Okay. But once you've found a second inversion everywhere, start playing up and down second inversion. Just for yourself. And it's a bit trippy to think about because all these chords sound the same. Why do I need so many versions of the same chord? I mean, this organization of notes on the piano will only stay, that's the only place I can find this. I can't find this higher up or lower up on the piano. Whereas on the guitar, let's play second inversion, sorry. That, that order of notes only exists 
in this position on the piano, whereas on the guitar it exists here, it exists here, it exists here, it exists here. So familiarize yourself and find the ones that you enjoy playing. For instance, I don't enjoy playing root position triad on this string set. I don't like this shape right now. It, it doesn't come naturally. Like for me to switch from this to that, you see, it just takes too much time. So that will be an area of focus for me, is to come to the string set and just to rotate between these two, just so that I feel comfortable using my pinky to fret notes. Because uh, when I'm up here, I don't need to use my pinky. I can use my ring finger, right? But if I use my ring finger here, it's still possible, but it, it, it impedes a lot of motion. I mean, unless I want to get that high C there, then, then it's fine. So this is another thing. Yeah, if I could spend the last five minutes just talking about this. You will have to come up with your own devices, your own methods for describing and, and finding and playing these things. Because if you rely on a book of licks, a book of tabs, it's not, it's not wrong to have a book of licks and a book of tabs. It's not wrong. There's no wrong thing. There's just things that stunt your progress. The only wrong thing is to stay in the same place. And even that is not wrong because sometimes you just need to stay in the same place for something to become familiar. So you just stay in the same place, playing the same things over and over. That's also fine. But there comes a time where you need to move beyond what you're comfortable with. And as soon as you're comfortable with something, you need to find another way to challenge yourself. Okay, this is going to be the one thing that makes you progress on the guitar or on any instrument for that matter in a very very like don't expect to progress quickly but if you're intentional about what you work on and if you keep track of, of what you're working on and move on to the next thing when the previous thing has become obsolete or at least familiar then you will grow you will grow even if you're just playing triads like right now all i've been focusing on for the past two weeks is the triads but my musical growth has skyrocketed because i'm starting to see the guitar in my own way through my own eyes it doesn't help that I'm talking to you about it and you're not playing your instrument. It's not going to it's not gonna get into your head. It's not gonna grow you as a musician. Which should be your goal with playing any instrument is that I want to express musical ideas. Musicality is a compound word in my opinion of music mentality. Music mentality is musicality. Your mentality surrounding the music is what makes it sound good. If your mentality is randomness and you enjoy it, it will sound good. Even if the notes that you're playing are completely random, if you really are about it, it will sound good. I promise you it will sound good. Like the thing about sounding good or sounding bad isn't necessarily the notes involved. Like sure, of course we hear the notes. So it has to do with the notes involved to a degree. But more than that, it's the attitude of the player. It's the attitude of the player. There are players that aren't very technically skilled but they are emotionally connected to their instrument. And that speaks volumes. That makes it real. That makes it feel like music. That is why you'll have a song with just a guitar and a voice move you. But then other songs will have like extensive production and great mixing and effects. And it just doesn't move you. Uh, and that is, that is music. Music has this unquantifiable metric. Something that you can't measure that informs the emotional content and then how it's received which again i might the next video i might just make about my my philosophy my mentality about the music i i i feel like it would be important for me to share how i think uh without talking about music just so that um those watching understand where i'm coming from with this thing i am not a music teacher i'm a student of life and I'm a student of vibration because everything that lives has a vibrational frequency. Um, and I study that, whether it is the pattern of the leaves swaying in the wind and trying to find the resonance of that. Like you can see that this thing is forming a, con a, a consistent cycle. I study that. Um, the easiest way for me to grasp vibration right now is on an instrument, especially the guitar, because I can feel the vibrations, I can see them. Um, but yeah, I'm not a musician. I believe I'm a scientist. And I... <laughs> it's going to be so crazy. It's going to sound like I'm delusional, but gen I'm, I genuinely mean it. I, I do believe that I'm a scientist. 
uh, but I'm not a lab coat scientist. I'm a scientist of the emotion. I'm, the, I'm a scientist of the subtle. Um, or at least I try to be. I open myself up to that possibility. Um, but again, one more time, just so that you know what to practice. Root position, first inversion, second inversion, root position. Same with the string set, second inversion, root position, first inversion, second inversion. Go through that and all the strings, go up the string set and then come down the string set. to a metronome if you if you can and just try and keep time try and switch the chords slow it down if it's too fast uh there's nothing wrong with slowing things down i think that's all i have to cover in this video see you in the next one enjoy practice